everyone. Welcome to Sports Beat 40 here on ACC 40. I'm Richie Babb along with Mickey Irving and Frank Lapoli. And we got a big match coming up. It's the region dual finals here on ACC 40. 14 ranked wrestlers we'll see wrestle tonight. Frank had an opportunity to talk to Robin Brinkley, the guy that does all the rankings for the Virginian pilot. And this is what he had to say about the guys that will be on the mat tonight. Robin, uh, it's towards the end of the year. The, your top ten has pretty well fallen right into place. Well, fortunately, wrestling is one of those sports where you have dynasties and you have uh, middle-of-the-road teams and also runs, and it's not that difficult to, uh, to, to do, so I, I can't take all the credit for that. Uh, Kempsville, Great Bridge, you had a column in the paper. I enjoyed reading it. You said, what if, what if Kempsville beats Great Bridge? And they had an opportunity to do it, and tonight they sure made the most of that opportunity in our semifinal match. Well, that's the best dual match of the year, certainly the best one since uh, Great Bridge and Township at the duels. And what can you say? I mean, uh, great matches should have some upsets. You have some pins. It, it, had, it had everything in there, starting, you know, really at, at 19. And that, that, that turned it around and, and led us right to, the, right to the wire. I thought that was a great match. I thought the turning point for Great Bridge was Donano. Uh, his, uh, he had been pinned by Palmer before. And then he comes back in a very emotional wins, and that really, really gave a steady great bridge a little bit, and kind of uh, gained him some very valuable points. As I saw it as a, as a six-point swing for great bridge. I don't think Palmer would, was going to pin him again. Donano was actually ahead the first time when he caught him, but I mean that was Palmer was undefeated, so you had to give him the edge going in. Even with that, I thought they were in pretty good shape after Ginn's pin of Easton, because then you had. Barlow, who, well, not, you know, not quite an even bet against uh, Kelly. It's a 3-2 match, and then I think most people probably gave Lupton a slight edge at 71, and when Graybridge swept those two, that that took a little bit, of, that took a lot of the pressure off. And then it uh, made it interesting with the pin at 89, with Upton uh, gets the pin uh, at 189, and uh, made for a great conversation going into heavyweight. Yeah, that just delayed the celebrating a little bit. I, I can't. I was talking earlier. I really don't remember a match all year. It's, it's really gone to heavyweight with, with much on the line, and, and at least this one did. So anything can happen, but you had a feeling with uh, Dump that it probably wouldn't. Yeah, the Dump uh, definitely unloaded the big one. And, uh, so Great Bridge, Great Bridge wins it uh, in the semifinals over Kempsville by the score, I believe, it was 31 to 23. But now on to the, to the finals here with uh, Great Bridge and Green Run, and that could be just as interesting with a lot of your ranked wrestlers going head to head. Well, Green Run's just sat there kind of on the sideline for the last couple of weeks since they lost to Kempsville. Their top of their lineup almost from 3 to, to 60 is very solid. Uh, their 71-pounder got hurt this afternoon. I don't know if they're going to have anyone there, and if they just give away six, that could, could be very damaging, but it, it has the potential to be very entertaining for, for quite a while here. I see it that uh, Green Run could possibly go into the 135-pound match sweeping all the weight classes. It could happen. They're all ranked. They're all good wrestlers, but somehow against Great Bridge, you, you don't expect that to happen. Well, anything does and can happen in wrestling, and a lot of interesting things has happened here in the regional Dumi Championships. That takes it from here back to you guys. About ready to get underway here at Lake Taylor High School and Mickey Green Run, the team from the beach. Haven't seen much from them, but they are in the finals. They are in the finals, one of the top teams in the area. This is what Coach Harcourt had to say about the Stallions from Green Run. Well, our slippers fit well. We got the dancing shoes. Now, we're ready. The kids are looking good. Uh, 3 through 40, there are a lot of ranked kids. It's going to be an outstanding battle between both teams. I think it's going to be outstanding. It's going to be like a regional championship. Uh, a lot of future regional and state kids are going to be meeting each other. The upper weights, um, they have a, the edge, but we've been doing some really good things in the room with the kids, and they're really starting to come around. 52 and 60 are looking really good. Uh, 89 pounds looking a little, a little sharper than he had been in the beginning because he didn't start until after Christmas. So things are coming around in the upper weights. I'm, I'm comfortable. What do you got to do to win? Win the close ones. Win all the close ones. And there are going to be several of them. Uh, not let a snowball happen. If somebody gets upset somewhere down a low weight, or somebody catches somebody and pins somebody, that's called the snowball effect. And that can bring a team up and the other team down. It happened last year at 1.30 when we wrestled Great Bridge right here. Frank, we talked to him before. Coach Stevie Martin from Great Bridge. Close match in the semifinals. How does he feel about this? Well, uh, Coach Stephen Martin was in for a ride with a big match against Kempsville. Kempsville thought they had a shot at it. They made the most of their opportunity. I talked to Coach Martin, and here's his reflections on what happened and what may happen in the next bout. We wrestled well in some matches and wrestled poor in some, and we didn't perform up to our ability level. 
no, so we weren't real happy. We're happy we won, but as far as overall performance, we weren't we weren't very pleased. Now we have our kids know they have to make amends for that tonight. So we told them this is our opportunity to make up for their mistakes this afternoon. So we'll see what they do. Great uh, green run is loaded in the lower weights. Uh, it could uh, very possibly they could get a snowball effect going in uh, to the first five or six weight classes. Uh, how do you look at the first? Uh, the start of the match. First six weight classes, 3, 12, 19, 25, 30, and 35 are all toss-ups. Um, there's no telling what could happen. We want to come away with as many wins as we can. If we're down 0 6 going into 140, we're going to have a work cut out for us. So we need to win some of those earlier weights, which our guys need to anyways for their own individual purposes because they're going to hit some of these guys. The two three-pounders are the best two guys in the region in the state. They're going to meet several more times. So they, Darnell just need to beat that boy just for the sake of staying on top of him. And so we don't want to get in a situation where we're down, we're 0-6 we're going in 140. So we need to win some of those matches in the first six weights. Before we go to the region finals, let's take a look back at quarterfinal and semifinal action from Lake Taylor High School. Western Branch met Denby in the quarterfinals from Lake Taylor. A pin from Chris Fiola and a 15-5 win for Brett Thompson are the only highlights as the Denby Patriots rolled over the Bruins 33-19. Green Run tangled with Lake Taylor in one quarterfinal. The Stallions had four pins in a row to open the match and finished the match with six falls and decisive victory over Lake Taylor 47-16. Great Bridge met Ferguson in their quarterfinal matchup, and the Wildcats decided to rest starters Sean Darnell and Brian Jones. They had big wins from Labisha Kostick and Shannon Baines, as well as a pin from Mark Strickland to roll into the semifinals with a 49-13 win over the Mariners. Kempsville battled with Mari as Brian Miller and Danny DeReese paved the way in the lower weights for Kempsville. Rob Barlow also had a pin, and the Chiefs dominated the Commodores 51-12. Green Run faced Peninsula Power Denby in the semifinals, and the Stallions dominated the first six weight classes and cruised to a 44-16 victory over the Patriots. Great Bridge and Kipsville locked up in the semifinals as the Chiefs and Wildcats went to battle for the second time this season. Frank Rapoli had a chance to talk with John Donano and Billy Allred, along with Kempsville coaches Tim Spruill and Keith Lawrence. Big win. Uh, you know, tell us about the win. You, you lost to him before. What did the match mean to you? And it meant a lot to your team. Uh, well, I had a bit of a revenge match there. He, uh, I was, I had the lead last time we wrestled, and he caught me in a pin hold. And uh, I really was up for this match. I was ready for it, and I just let it all loose that time. Uh, after you won the match, it, it really gave your team a big boost. You know they were down at the time. Uh, yes, it was a crucial match. It turned out in the end uh, it was closer than we thought it would be. Carlos had a bad break there. 
and uh, so it was an important match. I'm glad I was able to pull it through. Billy Allrad, you pretty well won the match for him. You put it out of reach. Um, it was the same thing as his. Mine was like a revenge match. The last time we wrestled, he tore out my shoulder and put me out for two weeks. And I was determined to make sure this time it wouldn't happen like that. You use your legs a lot. Was that part of your strategy? Yes, sir. That's like a lot of times I'm not, I don't get as tired as the guy on the bottom. So, And I'm just trying to get, rack up the points. Uh, you got to be real pleased with your team's performance. It was a much closer match. You won some that uh, you needed to win, and uh, you and you a lot of strategy there. Absolutely, we, we're very proud of the kids the way we wrestled tonight or this afternoon. Uh, the guys at, at 119, Johnny did a terrific job. We we changed some of his style on his feet to help slow down the other guy, and, and, and it worked for us. Well, I feel the same way. We, we approached it, you know, uh, from some of our mistakes that we had made in the past and tried to correct some of them as we wrestled them before, and we were able to adjust, make some adjustments and make the match closer. But, you know, there's a lot of tough people out there, and they had just uh, one more tough one than we did. And, and uh, so I, I think they're going to win the state. They're a fine team. Um, 119 and 130. Let's talk about that a minute. You took the guy to your knee. Unfortunately, I reckon I recognize that style. Uh, you, you instituted it for this particular match. Uh, what is the strategy behind taking the guy to one knee? Well, uh, we feel that uh, you know that's one of their, their weaknesses, and so if we if we can put him down on his, on his knees and try to slow down the other guy and try to get in on, on a shot or a leg and try to finish it down there, we feel like their guys are better in that position. Well, they're both very long-legged youngsters, and they had trouble protecting their legs before. And as you know, uh, we've done this in the past with certain long-legged guys, including the former Great Beard coach himself. And and uh, it was effective, and, the, and, it, and it helped them stay close in the match and do, do better. A uh, great match. Congratulations. Got to be proud of you guys. Thank you. Eastern Region Finals here from Lake Taylor High School. We're about ready to go. Let's go over to the table to Frank and Mr. Babb. Hello, everybody. Here we are about ready to get started at Matt side here on Sports Beat 40 with uh, the region dual final match, Frank. We'll see the Great Bridge Wildcats take on uh, the Stallions of Green Run High School. And you can see the huddle in the, right in the middle of the mat. Uh, looks like uh, they'll be calling the play and uh, kickoff will be to the north goal. <laughs> and you can, these guys are intense. As both teams have had big wins, but in the opposite direction. Great Bridge escaped an upset from Kemp's in the semifinals, and Green Run has stomped, crushed, marched his way into the finals of this tournament, both of them riding a wave. Run riding a wave of just getting here, and that's Great Bridge, oddly enough, right. and Green Run riding a wave of, of improvement, uh, and the strength of their lineup is right from the very beginning with Sean Donnell ranked number one and Rob Wilkie ranked number three. Great Green Run needs to win all of the lower weights to be in the match. Darnell in on a low single, pulling at his head, then search for a short run called running the pipe or jab and scores his two. Darnell draws first blood and takes a two to nothing lead. A lot of rank wrestlers. There's a rank wrestler in every one of the lower weight classes so far from 103 right on up to 135 and 140. Looks like there's no difference there either. Out on the mat now at 103, Sean Darnell uh, for Great Bridge, ranked number one in the area, taking on Rob Wilkie, ranked number three from Green Run. And there is an escape and another takedown, and that makes the score now four to one. We like to thank everybody that's been watching and uh, want to tell you about our contest that uh, will be coming up now. I think you can see on your screen right now the name and address of the station, and that is Be On Our Show Contest. <laughs> and yeah. uh, and th that is we're going to pick some people to be on the Southeastern District Telecast and the Eastern Regional Telecast. to be a little roving reporter with uh, Richie and Mickey and myself involved in our telecast. We appreciate all the support you've given us. Please keep those cards and letters coming. Ooh, watch that knee. And uh, we'll have you on the show to share in all the great fun we have, huh, guys? Oh, yeah. There's so, no end to the fun around. Really? So just call that name up on this, that number up on the screen or write us 
and we'll be having a drawn and we'll have uh, try to get you on the eastern southeastern district tournament and in the eastern regional so we're going to spread it over a couple of telecasts to give everybody a shot at entering the contest that make the scores now four to one favor of Darnell over Wilkie of Green Run. Twenty-five seconds to go now in the first period, still four to one. Darnell with two takedowns and only escape, only an escape for Rob Wilkie here in the first period. Mickey Irvin down on the far side. Mickey, you got some uh, surprises in store for us tonight? I'm pretty sure we have a couple of people here in attendance. I've already seen uh, for, uh, the uh, coach of Kimsville, Tim Sproul. I'm going to try to catch up with Tim in just a little bit and see what he has to say. And also uh, Coach Hartnoff. Yeah, coach we're going to have Coach Hartnoff to sit in with us uh, and uh, be one of our announcers here in a bit, a little bit later into the match. And uh, also I saw, I believe I saw the, the pit bull in the stands tonight. Oh, yes, he is here. The pit bull, in case you don't know who that is. That is, you want to tell him, uh, Mickey? Chris Viola from Western Branch. They call him the pit bull because he knows how to bury the bone. So I'm going to talk to him at the uh, 112 match, Frank. Great. And see what he thinks. The crowd seems to be into this bout already, and uh, now this is in five to one's the score. A green run literally needs to win just about all these lower weight classes. Right now, Wilkins going to have to put something. There's a referee's timeout. The, the referee's on the mat. If you look real close and squint, it's look like the same guys. You're close. It's the Davison boys. <laughs> hey, how about Timmy that? and Stevie, or St Stevie and Timmy, depend on how confused you are when you look at them. <laughs> and there's a little run in the pipe. He's just That's called run in the pipe. And the reason they call that is the leg is like a big pipe, and you walk backwards, and it's called run in the pipe. Mm. Little Mr. Rogers terminology Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Can you say running the pipe? <laughs> I can say it. <laughs> Sean Darnell is one of my favorite wrestlers. Well, okay. i tell you what the referee said when he pounds. ran the pipe. You yeah. know what the referee said? Two points. Two points. That was a takedown. And two plus the five points he already had equals seven. And there it is. Number one against number three. Will possibly that uh, these two guys may hit again in the regional finals. I don't believe we've seen Sean Darnell uh, lose a TV match. Well, we haven't seen... Uh, uh, Rob Wilkie lose a TV match <laughs> because he hasn't been true. on the show. You got a point. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> point well taken. And so uh, a lot of these guys are like that. Again, I want to take this opportunity to thank everyone from Virginia Beach to, and Chesapeake that have called the station and seen us personally and, and given us your support. We really appreciate it. We've done twice the wrestling we've done last year and uh, we appreciate it we're trying to do the best we can and uh, your support just uh, makes it that much easier for us absolutely tell you what uh, Wilkie ranked only two wrestlers uh, behind Sean Darnell but uh, Darnell putting him through his paces right now up seven to one with 17 seconds to go in the second period I'm not surprised, though. I, I'm going to say that. I tell you what, the semifinal match with Great Bridge and uh, Kempsville was a real barn burner. Uh, I know we'll be, you'll be seeing a little clips of that match as it comes up, as we can fit to it occasionally. I tell you, uh, great, uh, Kempsville did a master job. Of, of coaching and strategy and almost and it almost paid off because going into the one to the heavyweight it was anybody's ball game mm -hmm. but the dumpster lowered the boom and came for and won the match 72 the score that's the first point that uh, Wilkie's been able to score oh and it's a big one it's a barrel roll and he's got he's got the two and He's going to slip out of it. He's going to slip out of it. That's what he needed. He needed to put together a combination. If he would have scored the back points, 
That would have tied it, but you know what they say, if ifs and buts were yeah. made of nuts, we'd all have a Merry Christmas. And it wasn't Christmas time for Wilkie on that set of points. No, Sound Frank, I didn't know they all said that. Yeah, you didn't know that? <laughs> no, I know. Jeez, where do you guys live in a cave? <laughs> all right, 7-4 to four with the third period. Wilkie's got to turn them. Remember, Wilkie ranked third in the area. Tell you what, uh, three back points will tie this thing up. There he goes. Yeah, but see, he did the yeah. right thing. Now, if he rolls them, nope. See, this should make no points yet. And there, there are the two reversal points for Darnell. 42 seconds. That'll make it 9-4. to four. Yeah, 9-4, to four, but if he rolls them, puts him on his back, it's 9-9, nine sends it into overtime. Remember, there's no ties. Also, this dual meets is unique. You know why this dual meets is different from why? all the others? Uh -huh. It can't end in a tie. Oh. If it's a tie, numerically, it, they go to a uh, tiebreaker system. The first of the tiebreakers is the team that has won the most number of matches. Now, if there's a, a tie match, which can't be, you wrestle in overtime, you know, uh, so, whoever wins seven matches wins the match. Wilkie gets two points for a reversal. That'll make it nine to six as the third period ends. Now, that's a tough one. That's a tough one that uh, Grapery, like Coach Harcourt said in the beginning, he needs to stop the snowball effect. Mm -hmm. Make the team score now three to zero in Great Bridge's favor. Coming up here, we'll see another ranked wrestler in Marcus Sanchez from Green Run taking on Shane Darnell of Great Bridge. Just doesn't get any easier. Last time we uh, had a look at Shane, he had to go against the, the bull, the pit bull there, Chris Viola. Sanchez is ranked number three in the area, and Darnell is not ranked at all. Figure that one. But uh, Darnell had a took a real thumping this afternoon by Brian Miller. He saved a little. Uh, Face white came back real strong and, so, and stopped himself from being technical fall. Stalemate called. Clock will stop. Sanchez, a rather muscular looking 112 pounder, reminds me of Viola a little bit. Oh, yeah. He does look like he does, he does have that same type of body style. Russ was a little bit like Viola, too. He does, he does. And, but I tell you, they're, they're going to need for him to wrestle like Green Run's going to need for him to wrestle like Viola to give them any chance. Oh, God! It's a nice, a nice call. Nice move. One minute to go in the first period. He has, Sanchez has plenty of time. Plenty of time. And what a beautiful move. It's like that dresser move we saw in the Virginia duels. Right, right. I tell you what, a big a pin here would go a long way. So you can see it right there. Look down there. Squint your eyes on the television set. Get on the floor and look for that fall. There it is. They're right back in it. Snowball effect. Remember what Coach Harcourt said. See if we can bring that back up on the replay. Get to it when we get a chance. Big win. Big win for Marcus Sanchez coming in rank number three. And that'll make the team score six to three all of a sudden. Six to three, so what they have effectively done is they got back the points right. at, one oh, at the first pat weight class, because you right. get six, so you right. can say they've neutralized that match, and they right. they got the points they need, so it's like they got two decisions. Uh, let's go over to uh, Mickey Irving. Mickey? Up here with Chris Viola, Frank's favorite, the pit bull. Chris, what do you think of the last match? I think it was a little too quick. You know, I thought it was going to be a little bit closer than that, but he caught him, and he got him. Frank, like you said, a man of few words, but he backs up what he says. Back to you guys. There's the pit boy. He was sniffing around looking for a bone in the stands. Uh, he wanted to see a little bit more action there. That's the yeah. pit bull for you. Two ranked wrestlers here at 119. Carl Perry of Great Bridge, ranked number two. Ben Pratt from Green Run, ranked number three. Now, uh... The Perry lost one of his in his last match, a very controversial match. He lost to Kempsville. He lost on a Stalin call and a lock and hands call at the buzzer. Mm. There's that little outside sweep 
outside step sweep, and he's in great shape. Let's see if he can run the pipe. There's the pipe. Remember we talked about it later. He's trying yeah. to get his momentum going, and then he'll chop wood is what they call where he chops straight down. But you see his foot? His foot's in good shape. He can stop him from doing that. Mm -hmm. He's blocking him off there. Heads down. Not in good position. He'll rotate to the outside and try to turk him. Lift him in the air. See if he can... He can still run him back. He's got to bring his foot way back to do it, though. See what he decides to do. He's he, he tried to run the pipe, but the pipe wasn't there. There it is. He didn't do it right. There's two takedown points for Ben Pratt to get the points going on the board with 45 seconds to go in the first. Uh, Perry came into the dual meet uh, championships with only two losses, and he's already lost one tonight, so he could match his overall, you know, if he, if uh, Pratt wins here, that, that'd be the... Hand and Perry two losses right. in the same day. He hadn't had two losses all season. So the competition in the regional regional tournament is good and it's emotional. Right. Emotion means a lot here. Perry trying for an escape here. In case you just joined us, the team score is six to three, in favor of Green Run. Great Bridge comes out, wins at 103. And Green Run comes back with a fall, a quick fall, at 112. And we'll show you that replay here when we get a chance to get it to you. And uh, that puts them right back in it. And that's what Green One's got to do is build a big lead going into the 145-pound weight class right. when the Terminator will make his appearance. The end of the first period there, Carl Perry gets his escape. Brent Pratt up 2-0. Something we see a lot at 119. You notice now Jody Staler, former Great Bridge wrestler, likes to keep his eye on Carl Perry, and he is out around the bench now, and he'll be shouting instructions out to Carl. Pretty good guy to work with, Frank. A uh, real good guy to work with. Not a lot better that's ever been. One of the best, smoothest wrestlers in uh, the probably the history of Virginia wrestling, and uh, he showed that that, that was one of the fluke where he was at North Carolina uh, and was a high school All-American. We've had the pleasure of working with him as this in the booth here at the Kickoff Classic, a real class gentleman. I look forward to him doing great things at Old Dominion where he's now wrestling. Number two against number three, and the number third ranked wrestler, Pratt from Green Run, is winning two to nothing. Two to one, actually. Carl Perry got a, an escape point. Two to one. Right. There at the end of the first period. 30 minutes, uh, th 31 seconds, rather, elapsed here in the second period. Yeah, those 30-minute bouts are tough. Well, I tell you what, you get exhausted. <laughs> You know, I know a few of the Perry uh, brothers, uh, Mr. Babb, and uh -huh. I have a feeling about a Carl that, uh, and that family, they don't like to lose at anything. No. And I think that's uh, one of the things that makes him as competitive as he is. The referee on the on the mat here, they're rotating. This is Gary Beetson and uh, Pat Kason. Uh-oh. There's the reversal. But no back points. Now what they're talking there is they had the reversal and they thought maybe the back points. Yes, he was on his back. But when they gave the control, they gave the reversal, but they didn't give back points. And then because when they said, okay, there's your reversal, the back points went away. And so uh, that's what happened there. And now the score is 3-3. Three to three. A nice sprawl. That's a sprawl when you throw your legs back. Great Bridge comes into this dual meet championships. Ranked number one in the area. The defending state champion. And ranked number eight in the nation. Mm -hmm. And the current... USA Today amateur wrestling moves, and there's two more points for Pratt. This match is just going to get bigger, better, and better as it goes on. We're in the second period with 17 seconds to go. The score is now five to four, favor of Pratt. Great Bridge, Green Run, excuse me. Northampton, Pennsylvania is ranked number two. You saw them in the duels, and Jefferson Township is still ranked number one in the country. That'll end the second period. A couple of lead changes there, but. Green run still on top of Pratt. 
five to four, Mr. Bell. And you know what? If Ben Pratt wins, it'd be a bit of an upset, at least according to the rankings. Ben Pratt coming in ranked number two. Carl Perry, or coming in at number three, Carl Perry ranked number two. I want to go back to this earlier match. I mean, Carl Perry has had two very tough matches today. This being the second, Pratt had a pretty well of a walkover, just smunched the guy. There's a, but that's, that's a world-class Turk right there. Perry really does great hip motion, lifts that leg up in the air, and steps deep for the Turk. There's Perry's shoes, or the red shoes. I don't see, they're gonna grab his foot on the far side. I don't know if we can got a, got a shot of that. Score still 5-4. Pratt did a great job getting out of this. Five to four is the score. So basically, Pratt doesn't have to do anything to win the match. Right. He just has to wrestle, not get turned on his back, right. and not get hit for stalling. Gary Beatson, that is calling the match, is particularly tough on any lack of wrestling. Mm -hmm. He, uh, great, uh, Kempsville in the, in, the, in the semifinal match came out with a strategy of wrestling on one knee, and it worked great for him, and he hit him, uh, Kempsville for stalling just because it looked like they weren't wrestling. Mm -hmm. By that. There's an escape point for Perry. Six to four, but don't let that fool you. Remember the Perry Aaron Beatson match when Perry was losing by two, came up with a five point move at the buzzer. Six to four is the score. One, oh, and Pratt in deep. Heads in a right position. Watch for a standing switch. Standing switch by Perry. He runs the pipe on Perry. Perry's on the outside. Lift him up in the air. They'll call it. And there's a sweep there, but his knees to the outside. He just has to stall it. Remember, Pratt is winning by two, so that even if... Oh, that's going to ice it up. If he's smart, he'll cut him loose. Eight to four is the score. 26 seconds to go. Get out to the side. And if this pace uh, keeps up, Carl Perry... He'll come up on the short end twice in the same day, and we haven't seen that. All it took a whole year for that to happen. Mm -hmm. Again, expect to see these guys in the regionals. Tough weight class, 119. Remember beats him? Mm -hmm. And then there's the, the there it is, big win right there. Green Run takes the team lead now, nine to three. That's right. And coming up at 125, a match that, at least on paper, they... 8-4 to four was the final score. And coming up at 125, a match that, uh, at least on paper, should go to green run. Reese Edgington, ranked two in the area. Labisha Costi at 125, unranked, but it's it's a dual final. It's like anything can happen. Well, remember what happened... Uh, and again, I want to refer to the Kempsville match where... Uh, where um, the Kempsville wrestler... wrestled for Great Bridge last year. Oh, DeReese. Danny DeReese. DeReese. Danny DeReese just thumped uh, Costa. Last year, we, co we, we called him the compactor. Remember that? And I was straightened down on that by Darnell. He came up to me prior to the match and said, you know, that's not a good nickname for him. That's what he said. Is that right? What did he suggest, Frank? He said that the guys in the room call him the Mad Russian. <laughs> uh, I'm going, really? yeah, the, the Mad Russian, the Mad Russian. I can live with that. Yeah, that's, I like that. Well, let's see if the Mad Russian can get his red up here and score some points for a great bridge and uh, and see if they can stop this snowball effect that, that, coach, that coach Hart ref, Hart court, Harcourt talked about earlier. One well, minute seven to go in the first period. It's two to zero in Reese Edgington's favor. I'm not used to having Great Bridges. I'm not. I'm not used to having Great Bridges points uh, put up on the guest side, but that is indeed the case. Edgington has got the got the two point lead. Make it four. Well, 38. <laughs> Costic in trouble. He sure is. And he gets the pin. There's Reese Edgington. So what uh, showed on paper turned out to be the case. Uh, Reese Edgington ranked two in the area. The Costic not being ranked at all. 
Tell you what, you can even give the Kimsfield Chiefs a little credit for this because of the tough semifinal match that the Wildcats had to go That's through, right. Mr. Babb. That's right. Coach Stevie Martin not looking real happy right now, Mickey, uh, because he's down 15-3. to three. And uh, it's probably a situation that they're not uh, accustomed to at all. Well, let's see Mr. Jones out there, Brian Jones. Up to uh, 130 now, Brian Jones ranked number one in the area. John Pratt unranked from Green Run. This is a match really at 15 to three. Great Bridge really got to have, and on paper they should have it. But again, you're in the dual finals, and uh, you really never know what happens when you get to tournament time. They might need a six here, in fact. Yeah, they could use that. Match been moving pretty quickly so far. Two falls recorded so far, both by Green Run wrestlers. Uh, Marcus Sanchez at 112 with 40 seconds to go in the first. Reese Edgington with 30 seconds to go in the first. Brian Jones, a member of this Wildcat team, that he is ranked number one in his weight class, but uh, not one of the prime time players, you right. would say. He doesn't get as much attention as maybe Mark Strickland does. Right, right. Here's coming up next, they have a hot John Donano. But we don't have a score yet at 1.30. 51 seconds to go into first, still no score. And Mickey. We're laughing. Yes. Frank has left the building, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. Uh, yes. He and Elvis have left the building. <laughs> I don't know if he'll be back. Let's hope so. Two points right there for John Pratt at 130. He gets the first points. And, you know, Brian Jones, uh, or at least John Pratt, rather, is really the underdog here, coming in unranked against Brian Jones, ranked number one. Wrestlers go out of bounds. Clock stops, and they'll return to the center with 21 seconds to go in the first. Talking to Frank earlier before the match, and uh, he said he wouldn't have been a bit surprised to see the score like this when it got to 130. Right. And Mickey, something that struck me about the Kemsville Great Bridge match, talking to you earlier today on the phone, you said, you know, that Kemsville Great Bridge match may come down to heavyweight. Yeah, uh, indeed it did. It did. <laughs> you it and Frank don't. just make too many correct predictions. I wish one of y'all would predict that I was going to win the lottery. That's the end of the first period. The score is two to one, or two to zero, rather, in favor of John Pratt. Brian Jones will take down. There's a shot. I uh, got to do something. Down by two. Into the second period now, or he's about to start the second period. Brian Jones, boy, just a flurry of activity out there. Oh, may have... Boy, what a struggle out there right this minute. This is some action here at 1.30, Mr. Bob. Boy, that was quite interesting because Pratt is trying to get Jones on his back, and at the same time, Jones is trying to kind of uh, roll Pratt over. Neither very successful. In fact, he ended up pretty much in the same situation they were before that flurry started. Coach Martin starts to pace the sidelines a, a bit faster. Coach Harcourt also off the bench for the Green Run Stallions. Takes a little more laid back approach than Coach Martin does. Yeah. Pratt has that uh, one arm bar on Jones. Gonna try to roll him over. Like the terminology, huh? Not I learned a little bit from Frank. I just can't figure what it would be to make Frank Lapoli leave a I can't believe he's gone for good. Uh, he's got to be back. I know his, that his pager went off. So there could be some big wrestling news going on somewhere. <laughs> yes, could be, or some drastic catering. Uh, maybe, some sausage, maybe some sausage just came in. <laughs> That's not funny. 41 seconds to go in the first. No, I've said it before. Frank puts on a pretty good spread. Yeah, you have said that. Yes, yes mm -hmm. indeed. It's just doesn't bring any to the broadcast. Yeah, I was going to say. No, Frank's still out there. I see his head, I think. Jones in trouble. 
And Dunn's in trouble. Still down by two. Only 30 seconds to go in the second period. So another period. And oh, yeah. to go. And there, Jones will get the two reversal points. And I tell you what, that'll tie it up. Two to two. John Pratt got two takedown points in the first. Now Brian Jones with two reversal points. Two points reversal for Pratt. So Pratt will get the two reversal points now. That'll make it four to two. You know, I have a feeling Frank's coming back. Yeah, I think Frank's back. Frank, everything okay? He's a little winded. Yeah. Yeah, well, what the heck? Yeah, things happen, you yeah. know? We were afraid that maybe, you know, something had gone wrong with some sausage or something. Or maybe the, <laughs> the hockey rink melted. Yeah. That's the end of the second period. Brian Jones. Score. Score of uh, four to four now. And that's the way the second period ends. Brian Jones, the number one wrestler in trouble. About to start the third period here, all tied up at four. And we're about to get Frank back into wrestling mode. Hey, I'm back, and four to four is the score with the team score. Oh, Arrington comes up with a fall. Woo, green running way out in front, 15 to three. Hey, I kept talking about it, snowball effect. And uh, they have to keep building a big lead. I've shown you, this green run team is for real. Mm -hmm. They're not all impressed by this uh, high national ranking of the Wildcats. Well, see, they had a pretty easy time of it right. in, uh, in, this, in this tournament. And Green Run and Great Bridge uh, had to wrestle for the, to wrestle their, the, their hearts out. Six to five to score after all that going on. Six to five. Takedown reversal and escape for Pratt. You know, uh, men, you may find it interesting. We're already up to 130, so that's one, two, three, four. What a great match. Another reversal. That makes the score now eight to six. And a reversal again. And potential back points. He's got a chance to put the Turk in. He's got to hook the foot. He's out of danger there. Watch him to be rolled. Got him blocked off. It might step, might still might roll him. 39 eight seconds. 8-8. Eight. Remember, there's no overtime. There's no time matches. They'll go to overtime unless he can turn them. 30 seconds to go. Brian Jones, what an upset so far. Brian Jones coming in ranked one. John Pratt unranked. If this goes into overtime, who do you like, Mickey? Well, oh, there's a because he's ranked running. number one, I like uh, Brian Jones, but Pratt has been very impressive. I don't see that. Why Why did he want him for Stalin? I don't he know. He's a top man. No, no, no. Yeah, you're right. I don't know. I, I mean, he had a bar in. 20 seconds. 8-8 eight to eight the score. 14 seconds. Here it comes. 10-9. No, no, no. No, right there. I thought he had it. One second. It's going to end in a tie, so we'll go overtime. to overtime. Now, Frank, conditioning definitely going to play a factor. Not play, here. But does... Zero. Does the experience... Yeah, somewhere else, but not here. These guys are both pumped. He just gave off his shot. Loosen up. The go Coach Martin was just doing a gorilla shake. So you don't think that either guy is a is a little winded here and nobody has an advantage no. over that? Who, baddest dog gets the bone right now. Baddest dog gets the bone. The guy who gets makes the opportunity work for him. They're both in great shape. Right here, baddest dog gets the bone. He's, he's got his leg, he's got his head. That's who wants it the most. Oh, he's got, oh, missed it. Watch, and he fixed his headgear, a mistake. He reached for his headgear. He made a mental mistake. There's Action's one over. point awarded to Brian Jones on a penalty because made a he mental had his, mistake. his legs locked. Made a That's mental a mistake. That's a big win for the Wildcats right there. See if we can show you that on the replay right there at the end. We get a chance to show it to you. That'll make the team score 15 to 6 as Brian Jones wins in overtime. But that's one you would think they might walk away with. Now we're going to 135. Shannon Baines ranked number two in the area. Kyle Prophet ranked number three. To show you, Frank, how well these... Let's take a look at this replay, Here's the Frank. replay. Watch his hands. All right, that's it. We're going to let it go from there. And he gets out of there. He misses it right in here. Here it comes. 
Now he faces them. They're facing them. Watch this. Yeah. See that? Reached for his head. There you go, right there. And there's the mental mistake, right there. He reached for his headgear and lost the match. Back to live action here. We're at 135. Five matches so far, Frank. No wrestler yet has been awarded any near fall points. First match ever won by headgear. <laughs> it's too bad, too. He just, uh, it's what he did, it with, but I didn't mean to do it. It's like, you know, you got an eyelash in your eye. You, right. you, 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 and he saw the opportunity. He was too close for him to fix his headgear. And that's what happened. Mark that up for the headgear. And that could be pivotal. Remember what we told you before, Green Run needs to win all of these matches. All right. 15 to 6, the team score right now, of course, still in favor of Green Run. Shannon Baines ranked number two. Kyle Prophet of Green Run coming in ranked number three. Prophet trying to get Baines on his back. And Baines certainly not having an easy time. Oh, there's, there's, a, there's a reversal for Shannon Baines. Scoreboard says 2-0, to zero, but in order to get a reversal, the other guy had to have a takedown first, right? Uh, no, that was just a takedown. There's back points there. This could be uh, number two against number three, Profits oh, okay. number You're three. Right. Right. This could be the... This could be the Green Run's last chance at romance right here because uh, the next win may be a long way off. Three near fall points for Shannon Baines. The first near fall points awarded in the match tonight. Nobody's been able to get uh, a wrestler, any wrestler on his back. Right. So the next match, 140, could be a, a somewhat of a toss-up. Two wrestlers, two uh, wrestlers uh, on the uh, roster for Great Bridge at 140, Denano and Harper. Uh, so they all have the opportunity to, to wrestle either one of those. Ryan, all right, let's go over match. to uh, go take here. it into overtime. Tell us what's going through your mind when you get to the overtime. Well, uh, I knew in the back of my mind that I had to win this match for the team, so I just went and gave it all I had, and I didn't think I had that much. He did have that much. Puts the Wildcats back on the rebound. Back to you guys. Thank you, Mickey. Five to zero is the score right here in the second period. Shannon Baines uh, uh, over Kyle Prophet. <laughs> Prophet of Green Run on top, down by five. After Baines gets two takedown and three near fall points. Locked off real well. See his hips? He just needs a... Prophet needs a big tug. He has to push his hips away. Rotate to his head. I don't know if it's going to get him there. He's going to... Now he just has to scoop his head. Scoop his head. Nope. Didn't do it. Five to nothing to lead for Great Bridge over Green Run at the 135 pound weight class. Shannon Baines with a 5-0 lead over Did Kyle Did you anticipate Prophet. this, Frank? Did you think uh, Baines was gonna be able to come out? There's a guy that we talked to uh, last week. Gave us a little insight. Chris Smith, Wildcat assistant coach, and that's coach uh, Stevie Martin. Took his jacket off. Jacket off. You can see things are getting serious. Mm -hmm. Did you think uh, that Baines would be in this situation up five already? Right. Uh, well, see, those guys are just going to put big moves together. It really doesn't mean a lot. The only thing that it says to me is he got him early, you know, which these guys are all capable of putting points on the scoreboard very fast. And like this, right, right here, if he can lock his hands, he's forcing the cradle. 
Kyle Prophet, oddly enough, is the stepson of Billy Martin Jr. Sound familiar to you? I think I've heard that name before. His Billy Martin's brother is Stephen Martin. How about that? So this is kind of a family situation here. Mm -hmm. Two minutes to go now in the uh, in the match. We're down to the third period. Billy still up five to zero. All his points scored in the first period. I can see Billy right now, kind of kind of squirming in the stands a little bit. He's in the t-shirt business, and his brother David Martin's next to him. He's squirming in one direction. The other one's squirming in the other direction. So. I guess they're going opposite directions here. I guess. I hate to have to grab the last piece of meat off a of Martin family table. Really? Because I got a feeling you'd have I, to fight I, for I'll it. tell you what, Mickey, judging from the way they look, I don't think they eat meat. <laughs> I mean, they look like they're in such good shape. I'm not even sure they eat. Well, it's profits in a bit of a as a bit of a pickle here. It's third period, 125, and he's got his arm real potentially dangerous situation. See the number one 140-pounder uh, here, Brett Thompson from Western Branch, and we'll get a talk with him during the 140. Green Run is still in the lead, 15 to six. Some more back points here for Baines. Three back points there for Baines. That's six near fall points for him this match, plus his two takedown points okay. makes it eight to uh, zero. Remember that name, Cobb Prophet. He's a sophomore. He was last year's Phnom ninth grader. He had a great year, and uh, he's tough. He's not going to be going anywhere. You'll see him right in the thick of things in a regional tournament. Sixteen, 16 seconds to go. The score is eight zero. So he's got, he needs to score a point. It's pretty wild when you're ranked in the area or two against three and you got to score a point to save your team a team point. Right. Got a caution right there against Baines. Fans very aware that Kyle needs that one point. He lifts it and get his hips outside his knee and lift it over his head is what he's trying to do. He's trying to get the foot and then just lift that straight over his head. But he knows it's it and there's the major decision. That's the end of the third period. That's the end of the match. So that'll give him 14 points. That'll make it 15-10 in favor of Green Run. Going to 140 now. John Donano about to go out uh, on the mat against Ben Rosencrantz. Neither of these wrestlers, Frank, are ranked. John Donano, a, a hot wrestler right now. Well, he's hot. He, he had the big win against Kempsville that turned the whole momentum of the match around. Kempsville just haven't had a great match, and Donano had a great match. Had a good one against uh, Western Branch as well, winning nine to seven. Now this is this will pretty well start the steamroll. And the, I think the snowball is beginning to form already for Great Bridge. Uh, basically, Green Run has to stop the bleeding. Right. Put a tourniquet on the hole, on the wound, and uh, they need to do it right here. If they even stand a chance, because Green Run, uh, Great Bridge, run, uh, goes into Murderer's Row <laughs> to steal a phrase from Jefferson Township. Rosencrantz with an escape point uh, a few seconds ago, make it two to one with a minute 18 to go into first. Forty-eight seconds to go, two to one. We're still in the first period. John Donato against Ben Rosencrantz. Two more points for Donato. His second takedown of the period will make the score four to one. Two 
Still have a doozy of a match on her hands here. Oh yeah. Green run still up by uh, by five. Oh. There's a little lift. Four to one's the score. 145, it doesn't look good, but the Terminator ranked number one, mm -hmm. and literally Green Run has no, no more ranked wrestlers. No more ranked wrestlers. Here we are. Set up and see if we can get you a picture. 11, 10 seconds to go into first. Not much going to happen here at the, at the end of the first period, I don't think. 4 to 2 is the score. Let's go over now to Mickey Irving. We're with Brett Thompson, the number one man at 140 from the Western Branch Bruins. Brett, what do you think of this match so far? Uh, these are two tough guys. Uh, Donano just now beat the guy that was ranked number three, and Rosencrantz was ranked number three. So I came out here to get a look at him. So what happens when you're ranked number one. You've got to keep working. He's working right now. Back to you guys. In the second period now, 140 to go. It's 4-2 to two in favor of Donano, Frank. Donano is just continuing to, to, to wrestle well here in the regional duels. With me, I have Coach Gary Hartraff, the coach at Cox High School, is not foreign to this situation at all. Coach, welcome to the show. Thank you, Frank. I appreciate the opportunity to be here and maybe add a little bit of my insight to what, what's going on. What do you see? How do you see the match so far? I see Green Run needed to win just about all the lower weights. They uh, lost at 103, but uh, kind of got a reprieve at 112 where they got that fall. Well, I think getting a fall at 12 was, uh, was big because um, anytime you pin a Great Bridge kid, that's a big win. And so getting a pin early kind of gets the momentum going the other direction and carried over into the 119-pound match. And uh, when, when Perry got beat, it was a heck of a match. Um, I can see a little bit of a shift right now in momentum. I felt like this match and uh, in particular was going to be a pivotal match because I thought they were pretty evenly matched up, and so I felt like this was, was a toss-up. It still is. Six to three is the score with 51 seconds to go in the second period. But uh, it looks like it's all Dinamo. He's supplying the offense. Well, it's 6-3 to three because he's given him three escapes and taken him down three times, and he just took him down again. So he's pretty much controlled the tempo of the match right from the opening whistle. Were you surprised at all at the semifinal results with Great Bridge and Kempsville? No, because um, Kempsville's been building towards that match. I mean, when they they beat Green Run and then they beat us and and Palmer became out, or came out for the team and got in there, and I think that... Uh, you know, they've kind of had this in the back of their mind and, and working towards it, so I'm not surprised at all. 25 seconds to go now in the second period. 8-4 to four to score after uh, Donato gets his takedown earlier. Wrestlers will come back to the center with 16 to go, 16 seconds, that is, in the second period. Green run is... Uh a predominantly uh, senior team, as is Great Bridge, Coach. Uh, you've wrestled against uh, both these teams. Uh, your team is, is young and uh, uh, the team of the future. Well, I think we've got some real good kids coming up next year, and our JV team is undefeated. And we've got some now some young kids that are going to be veterans next year. We, we had some kids that uh, couldn't break the lineup that will be in there next year, and I think... I think we're going to have a nice nucleus for a team, and if you know if the kids come out and work hard in the off season, uh, I think we're going to be a team to be contended with. I don't know if we're going to be the team, but I think we're going to be a team that you know people are going to have to prepare a little bit more for than this year. Going back to this match here, Coach, I know that uh, Green Run's uh, ranked wrestlers are in the lower weights. You're going to run up against uh, Strickland and uh, Kelly. Uh, Easton might not be in the lineup. How does the upper weights, how do you stack up uh, Green Run's upper weights at 71 and 89? Um, I think that Great Bridge has to have the uh, edge there because, uh, you know, they're just veterans. They've seen it all this year. They've had big matches. They've had big competitions. I really felt like the uh, Green Run team had to get a little bit more of a cushion in their lead with it as a team going into these middleweights because 
Um, when you go out there against Strickland, you're just hoping you don't give up any more than you have to. I believe it was uh, one, one, one thirty. With the Jones wins the match in overtime, literally with where uh, uh, John Pratt was reaching for his headgear, <laughs> lost well, due to headgear. <laughs> uh, that's just a habit. Sometimes they get into. They just, yeah, just they get a little bit twisted. It. They feel uncomfortable and they relax. For that's all it takes is to relax for a second. And, he got in there on a nice shot, even though his head was between his legs. He posted up, and and uh, Pratt just made a little bit of a mental error, not only by fixing his headgear, but by putting a head scissors on his on the, or leg scissors on his head. I want to thank Coach Hart Rathart. Coach, we're going to be talking to you when the match is over. I'm going to go over and announce some things that have happened to you, go over some of your career highlights, and I'm going to set you up for this. I'm going to have the B questions for you later on. Well, I appreciate it, Frank. Who are the big B questions? I don't know. I'm afraid to ask. I'll find <laughs> out. You guys do a great job. Keep it up. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. a lot. Thanks for being with us, Coach. Nine seconds to go now in the uh, match here. It's 14 to 8 is the score in favor of Donato. He gets two more points right here at the end. One second. That's the end of the uh, match. 16 to 8 is the score. And what's interesting about that is that Donato able through escapes and takedowns to give his team an extra point, a bonus point, uh, if you will. Uh, and that'll make the score, as we said, Mickey, 16 to 8. They win by 8. Great Bridge gets 4 points. And now it's 15 to 14 in favor of Green Run. How about Donato? Is he in a zone right now, maybe? I'll tell you what. He's been wrestling quite well. And right there, he controlled that match as Coach Hartnoff said from the very beginning. He did exactly what the guys on the bench were telling him to do, and he went out and got it done. Donato is just coming on strong at the right time of the year. That's right. Speaking of coming on strong, we're at 145 now. Mark Strickland, the Terminator from Great Bridge, ranked number one against Green Run's Tony Campus, unranked, coming into the match. So Jones, Baines, and Donato doing their job. Haven't talked to Shannon Baines yet. I'm going to try to catch up with Shannon in just a bit. Did you see that? That hurts, man. It's I tried got to, to look at that. It's got to. Shannon Baines did uh, crush somebody the other day, and I saw it on TV, and I was like, oh, oh man. Here we go. A lot of the room on the score sheet tonight. Two to one. At oh, my. Stripper. The Terminator. That'll teach me to go to refrigerator. Tony Campus has seen better days, Frank. He's seeing stars. Yeah, he's uh, what they call counting the lights in a big way. <laughs> right. Minute 15, it's 4-1 to one in favor of Strickland after another takedown. Strickland uh, seems to have been gotten a wake-up call. By the way, guys, before he gets his pin, Mark Strickland asks us, oh, there we go. Let's say there this first. Is. A fall with a minute five, and Strickland said, look at him, he's excited. He said, look, say a special hello for me to Joanna. So, hello to Joanna. From hello, Mark Joanna. From and, Mark Strickland. And Carlos Eason is now out on the mat. A uh -oh. bit of a surprise. Zach Yelts was originally scheduled to go in on that, and uh, Carlos was injured, but he's back in right now. But uh, let me tell you, if the Terminator tells me to say hello to somebody, it better um, get done. Do it. I don't know if I do this. I don't know. I'm not in the verdicts out. Carlos has had been pinned twice the last two times he's been on the mat. Well, Carlos Eason comes in ranked number one in the area, 152, taking on Joe Hagan uh, at uh, from Green Run, who's unranked. But Hagenman's certainly strong. He's tough. But uh, maybe a good win, a win here. Uh, they're thinking that uh, would be good for his confidence. Green Run, I think, should take the is in the lead at this point. No, it's 19 to 15 in favor of Great Bridge. I mean, uh, I'm sorry, Great Bridge is now right. taking the lead, 19 to 15. You sure it's not 20? <laughs> huh? 20 to 15? Shouldn't be. Let's see. No, uh, because it was 14. Oh, you're right, 20. Because he gets six points for a takedown. Sorry, Frank. 20 to 15 in favor of Great Bridge. Minute 18 to go. Carlos Eason up 2-0 after a takedown just in the first period. 
And uh, as we mentioned, the surprise to see Carlos Eason out there because uh, he'd been pinned twice. Had, uh, and really, uh, people, uh, the general feeling was that uh, Carlos may have been injured. That doesn't seem to be the case as he is on the mat. Uh, they were prepared to put Zach Younce out there at 152, who wrestled JV uh, most of the year. That, however, not the case. Zach uh, was unnecessarily prepared, perhaps, as Carlos Eason does go out on the mat. The wrestlers go out of bounds with a minute four to go in the first. Carlos Eason still living on his two points from his takedown earlier in the first period. All right, they'd like to see Carlos uh, win by a lot of points here to try to get his confidence back up. Uh, Carlos Eason, we call him the professor. Uh, we aren't the only ones, apparently. That's right. Yeah. Escape point for Hagen. Then. We want to... Uh, Wrestling's uh, kind of a big family. We want to compliment and commend Robin Brinkley on the wonderful job he's been doing in Virginia Pirate, Ledger Star. We don't care who you are. We just like to see you support the kids. Right. You know, I think an investment in these kids is a, is a dividend that will live forever. Right. And uh, we appreciate the great job he's been doing. Forty-six seconds to go, two to one. After Hagenman gets the escape, and I don't know, I don't know what you guys think, but it just seems to me that, that Easton's moving a little slow, like well, he's tired. Maybe Hagenman wouldn't think so. Well, he well remember he's he's not like a like a cat because he's so tall. Right. I mean like he can shoot and you'd still see him coming because right. here he comes and here he comes. Right. Like a long piece of wood. He's a lot of them there. He's not like gonna dash out of your way. Uh -huh. He wouldn't you know a matter door is something he wouldn't want to do. Right. You know. He's got a whizzer in there. That's called a whizzer. See that elbow in there? Mm -hmm. That's a whizzer. And the score is still just two to one. So. Here at 152, our, uh, Carlos Eason still up. Well, he's up three to one now. And he's in good position here, a little spread out. Look at his kind of a, a real elongated run in the pipe. <laughs> Looks a little sloppy there. Looked like he was running the log at that point. You yeah, know? really. <laughs> Carlos Eason certainly with a reach and height advantage here. There was Coach Martin again with the gorilla shake. I haven't seen that yet. Yeah, I've you got to catch that on it. tape, you know, the gorilla shake. You have to catch him do that between periods. Mm -hmm. Coach Martin does the gorilla shake. Is that right? No, oh, outside sweep single. See if he can he can run the pipe. Here's what he's trying to do, but his head's down. Swing to the outside, and he's just too much of him. Like a, the old, put the old octopus wrap around on him. Mm -hmm. Just under a minute to go in the second period. Not a lot of points in this one. Take down in the first period, escape in the second one for Eason. Only an escape in the first period for Hagen, and makes it three to one. Two seconds to go in the second period. Twenty-three seconds now, still three to one. Not the most exciting match of the night so far. Well, it it might not be exciting this match, but the team score is so close. Still 20 to 15. That uh, one mistake. It scores only. Uh, scores only three to one. Right. They're right back in it. Uh, 
That's the end of the second period. And let's go over to uh, Mickey Irving. Mickey. Here with Shannon Baines and Mark Strickland. Shannon, eight to nothing. Did you think you were going to be able to put that many points on the board? Well, Kyle, he's a really tough kid. And he does some strange things. He has really loose hips. So I didn't think I was going to shut him out. And he fought me out real tough in there on my singles. But uh, I'm just glad I could score the eight points for the team. And Mark, how important was it to get the six up on the board? Well, uh, as you know, earlier our team had a, a real a tough one earlier, and it kind of drained us a little bit mentally, and our little guys, our lower guys, were kind of out of the match a little bit, and I thought maybe if I could go out there and, and win big, it, it might be able to pump the team up. And as you can see, I, we took the lead now, and I think I guess it worked a little bit. Spark the team, and the Wildcats are on their way. Back to you guys. Here's a reversal. Yeah, that's a definite reverse. Look at this. Some of the... Scores four to three. Four to three with a minute and a half to go into third. And in favor of Hagen. We'll be trying to get our match summary up on the scoreboard here as soon as the guys can get it together to give you what the totals have been throughout the course of the match. A great new thing we've been doing. And uh, we'll be getting that, a new feature like the Sky Cam, you know. Oh, that's right. We haven't quite gotten that. Can't quite figure out how to get a blimp in the Raft, gym. Ra the Rafter Cam, Raptor you know. Rafter Cam, yeah. The Headgear Cam. Mm -hmm. But we have the new s summary scoreboard that uh, is really neat. We'll show you just how the, the flow of this match, you can almost like a graph. Almost. And the score is still 4-3. to three. And now that makes the score 5, 4-4. Four to four. Four to four, and a minute 13 to go. Now, now the intensity picks up. Now, a bit. now everybody knows. Now it's for everything. Oh, he just slipped. <laughs> there's two. There's two oh, points he, for Eason. He spun, but the guy wasn't down. He's got to be on his hands and knees before you spin. Right. That's a, a mental mistake. Uh, going back to two mental mistakes so far have really cost Green Run, and that was the fixing of the headgear back at the 135, 130 pound weight class, right. where I had to say at that up to that point I thought the momentum was in Green Run's corner, right. and I actually expect Green Run to win it in overtime over Baines, but he makes the mental mistake, and then there's a second one right there. He spins where there is no shoulders, a standing cradle. Oh, 48 seconds to go. Six to four. Eason's up. He's getting some back points here. No, oh, this is, if he pins him, this is over. This whole thing is over with. I haven't seen a cradle done like that almost all season. Well, he's so tall. He does it. Eason gets the fall with 34 seconds. Yeah, Talk about doing things for that, his. That was big win for, for Eason there, more so than for emotionally. Here with Coach Tim Spool of the Kimsfield Chiefs. Tim, are things going the way that you thought they were going this match? Well, I thought Great Bridge would probably take him a couple of those matches earlier at at, uh, at, at 19, especially. And um, as far as from that point on, it's been a pretty tough, you know, touch and go type situation. And uh, right now, Eason just finished and pin pin Hagerman, which it was a good match up until the last few seconds. And keep your eyes peeled out for this guy. We'll see him in Richmond in the individuals. Back to you guys. Thank you, Mickey. Starting the first period now here at 160. Jamie Kelly, ranked number one in the area against Namillo Baja. Baja is tough, was ranked previous. He is bad. He can pin you in a heartbeat. I'll tell you that right now. He's tough. And the score is 26 to 15. Now the snowball is rolling in Great Bridges' favor. I want to tell everybody that we do have a big contest going on uh, and Richie you want to tell everybody about it well all of this Frank uh, it's an opportunity for those people that like to watch the uh, that like to watch uh, the uh, that like to watch these matches like to get involved and uh, you know hang around the table a little bit uh, we have all they have to do is call the station numbers up there 547 1748 uh, or write us or write us uh, and the address will be on your screen send us you know send us your name We'll draw, and then you'll have an opportunity to uh, be a roving reporter for us. They even uh, let you pull a little cable. Yeah, they will, we'll let you have a good time. You meet the crew, tell some jokes, and uh, know all the... There's a, there's a reversal there by Baja. I told you this guy is tough, and uh, he can put some points on the scoreboard, and he's a pinner. This guy can pin you. So uh, Kelly uh, has had a, hasn't really had a whole lot of competition since the duels, but this kid is a tough one. So go ahead and give us a card or a letter. Let us know what's going on. 
and get you in. We're going to have the tournament. The, our contest is going to span over two different events, the Southeastern District Tournament and the Eastern Regional Tournament. So when you call us, let us know where you're from and your age. Thank you. Get your stuff in soon. The uh, responses are already rolling in. 27 seconds to go in the second period. Namilo Baja up by two. Well, make that, it's tied now. Tied at two with Kelly after the reversal. Hey Frank, by the way, Tim Spruill, after your job. <laughs> He's gonna be the new color man. You better watch out, because I think he can take you, Frank. What are they gonna wrestle for? He's got they're gonna wrestle he's, for. He's overweight. He needs to get, oh. to get. And here's our here's our new match summary. I love it. Look at this. At 103 for Great Bridge, Sean Darnell uh, wins three to zero. Gives Great Bridge a three to zero win uh, in or three to three to zero score. Then Shane Darnell gets beat by a fall by Marcus Sanchez with 40 seconds to go in the first. It's six to three all of a sudden. Carl Perry at 119 loses eight to four to Ben Pratt. And that makes the team score 9-3 to three in Green Run's favor. Reese Edgington pins Labisha Costic with 30 seconds to go in the first period at 125. He gives, gives uh, Edgington gives Green Run the 15-3 lead with that fall. At 130, in overtime, uh, Brian Jones wins 9-8 to eight over John Pratt, makes it 15-6. At 135, Shannon Baines uh, wins by a score of 8 to 0 to make it 15 to 10 still in green runs favor uh, then at 140 John Donano wins by a score of 16 to 8 to give Great Bridge that one extra bonus point if you call it that it's 15 to 6 it's 15 to 14 all of a sudden still in favor of green run and then the floodgates opened uh, just shortly just a little while ago Mark Strickland gets a fall at 145 with a minute 5 to go in the first to give Great Bridge a 20 to 15 edge and then Carlos Eason with a pin about 26 seconds to go in the third he pins Joe Hagenman to make it 26 to 15, and that brings us to where we are. Frank at 160. Jamie Kelly ranked number one in the area, taking on the Melo Baja from Green Run. Well, and Kelly has a 4-2 to two lead here, and uh, there's uh, about a minute 14 left in the second period, but again, Baja is a pinner. So uh, watch for him to strike lightning at any time. There's a one-on-one. -on -one. See, both Kelly get those hands and hips down. By the way, fellas, did speak briefly briefly with Carlos Eason, said he's feeling okay, but I just noticed going to put a little ice on the shoulder back there. I think he has a little bit earlier. of strain, and uh, uh, it turned out that uh, I wasn't sure if it was good if he was hurt to put him out on a match. I don't think that, uh, I think Great Bridge has the matter well in hands, but uh, it just shows you while I'm doing the color and they're doing the coaching, <laughs> because... Uh, <laughs> They put him out on the mat, and that's a big emotional win, so he can leave this weekend on a positive note. There's a star warning against Kelly. That may be the loudest we've heard from the Great Bridge crowd all year when Eason got the pin, and also when Donato got the eight-point victory. Right. Well, well, you know, also, uh, though, Mickey, it was probably one of the smaller Great Bridge crowds that we've seen. I thought this place would be packed. Still get a lot more response, I think, to the individual tournaments. I think just because of the tradition that, you know, that that's the that's that's the way that it's been done for so long. 16 seconds to go in the second now. Still a 4-2 lead for Jamie Kelly. Working up a sweat out there. Into the second period now. Here at 163, more matches to go. Frank, you have the Murderer's Row up there from uh, from New Jersey. What right. about the the strength here of Great Bridge of Great Bridge, the 145, 152, 160? What what would you call that? Uh, my little brain's ticking right here. <laughs> tick, tick, tick. I've given you a couple of tough questions the last couple of weeks here because uh, Where they have Murderer's Row. Uh, might have to have another contest. How about the gauntlet? How about the gauntlet? The gauntlet's a good one. It definitely is a gauntlet. You went from one right to the other. Nowhere to hide. Nowhere like the Clint Eastwood movie. I could just see Clint could Eastwood in that Martha, bus. Call him Martha and the Vandellas. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that wouldn't work. <laughs> well, they're not going to sing not. a tune. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. That's Kelly. And they're trying to get, there's no, not control yet. There's not control yet, but he may get the fall. Nope. 
Two points for Kelly, though. There's the takedown. Right. That'll make it 6-3 to three in his favor with about a minute 7 to go. You can see there's two referees on the mat, and they have an assistant referee and a head referee. It might be a chance for, since they're rotating, maybe you can, uh, a Rogan reporter can talk to one of the referees have some back points in the for rotation Kelly. ask them about the intensity of the matches. He'll get three back points for that, referring to Kelly. And indeed he does. A surge of points here makes oh, it 9 to pinned. 3. He has 37 seconds. And he gets two more near fall points. That'll make it 11 to 3, and that could be a bonus point situation if he can maintain that lead. Sixteen, fifteen seconds. And again, if Kelly can hold on to this lead, it'll be a bonus point for the Wildcats. That's it. That's the end of the uh, 160 match. Final score, 11 to 3. That'll give Great Bridge 14 points and it'll make the score 30 to 15. As we head to 171, Billy Allred of Great Bridge and Cheryl Ezel from Green Run, neither ranked. Well, tell you what, that didn't even take place. There was a forfeit there. So, uh, teams get six points for a forfeit, right? Six points. That's 36 to 15. And now we're at 189 with Joey Guth taking on P.J. Reed from Green Run. This has been a pretty short match. It's only about a minute, uh, an hour and 16 minutes so far. Right. And we're already at the at the penultimate match. Minute 40 now. They go into first period. Neither wrestler scored or has scored yet. And uh, Mickey, uh, Richie is... Uh, which, uh, Mickey's in the stands doing his investigative stuff, and mm -hmm. he's going to be with one of the Davidson boys. And uh, you want to know what a Davidson boy is, just stay tuned because we're going to show you what that means here in a second. Uh, you might want to check out Jason Emerson back there, starting to get a little pumped up for his match. He had to win uh, his match. I think he drools a lot, really. Uh, I, I don't like know. I think I saw him spraying water on himself okay. earlier. The dump getting ready. He had to win against Kemsville uh, for Great Bridge he to get did. here. You know what? I got I'm I'm going to announce this on television. Okay. Before I talked to the dump before the Kemsville match, and he said, "You know, I hope it comes down to me." Are you serious? He did. He did. He says, "I, I did." You know, he the last match. He said, "It hasn't come down to me all year." And I'm thinking, I go, you know, dump. I didn't say this to him. I go, yeah, for it to come down to you. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. It's got to be pretty close. It's going to be real close. That's right. Because, well, maybe our guys won't win by a lot. Yeah. You know. <laughs> right. So, right. So it came down to him. 35 seconds to go into first. And really, that may have been the, the first time that's happened since uh, Western Branch last year. Right. 28 seconds to go here in the first period, and the score is two to nothing. Team score for Joey Goo. Team score 36 to 15 in favor of uh, Great Bridge. After uh, well, they took those points away. It's still 0-0. Still anybody's ball game here. 36-15 to team score in favor of Great Bridge after Billy Allred was forfeited to by Green Run. The match is virtually over at this point. The score is 36 to 15. Six. <laughs> Two, one. That's the end of the first period. Here's a takedown. Here at uh, 189, Joey Guth with the takedown. Let's go over to Mickey Irving. Mickey. Here with Steve Davidson, one of the guys who's working the match tonight. Is the intensity level what you thought it was going to be for this uh, Eastern Region Final? Absolutely, it's a lot better than I thought it would be. The uh, the kids uh, for Green Run and Lower Weights have seemed to be wrestling a lot lot tougher, a lot more physical than I 
thought they would. Um, Great Bridge, um, they might be showing a little signs of maybe a little fatigue out there. Uh, they're coming back strong here in the upper to middle weights, and, and uh, I think they'll pull the match out. But it's it's a it's real intense out there. We've had some real fine wrestling for a finals. Usually, uh, sometimes your semifinals are your best matches. In this case, I'd have to say that the finals have uh, lived up everything that could be expected and more. And Frank, he's happy. You didn't call him Tim this time. You called him Steve. So, thanks, Frank. Back to you guys. Ooh. It's pretty easy. Uh, Timmy's the better looking of the two. It's uh. pretty easy. I had to think about it, you know. He's the younger one, and Stevie's got a lot more wrinkles in his face. Isn't that nice? That's right. Well. I got to leave early tonight, guys. Yeah, I tell me. <laughs> tell me, we'll cover for you. 124 to go in the second period. It's 3-0 to zero in favor of Joey Goose. I tell you, you know, ever since we announced it about the big contest, we're calling in, and you can see the name on the screen, about working with the team and possibly doing some roving reporters. You noticed how Mickey has gotten a lot better in the stands? <laughs> well, he has talked well, to a Frank, lot more people. Know, the, the wrestling coverage we do, I, I can't go out at night anymore. I just get mobbed. And I know it's the same way with Mr. Bad. Because you know what they say? Can you get me Frank, Frank's autograph? <laughs> I'm going to stop charging you for him at this point. Uh, you know, shoot. Well, that's what we've been doing. Uh, oh, we've been charging you for <laughs> Overpaid, I bet. Yeah, I'm sure. Okay, listen, we appreciate everything everybody's done, all the cards and letters that uh, people calling us in, and the great job that we've been doing. Mm -hmm. 46 seconds to go in the second. Um, and I think that's Spike, Spike Lee. Lee. <laughs> yeah, it is. That's exactly what... Spike Lee. Where is Spike Lee? Well, we'll get an yeah. interview with Spike Lee. New movie. Make it's the right move. Spike Lee. 32 seconds to go now in the second. It's 3-0 to zero in favor of Joey Booth. He can't go anywhere. The sophomore. Just goes to show you one more time. Or more money. He's out there. Spike Lee loves that wrestling. See it here in one of our matches. Well, you heard about the coverage. Yeah. I think he wants your autograph. <laughs> He's sneaking up behind us. Mm -hmm. I'm saying that. I can't believe oh, I believe no. the owner of Smacky what, Stats Incorporated. The owner and there operator right of Smacky there. Stats. See right there in the middle, Ryan Wick. He does he runs the company that does our stats during football season. An excellent statistician for football. And an educated I man. thought, can we get that shot back? And a well educated I thought that was Mackie Stacks, the no, big guy behind that guy. No, that's stacks. Greg Jennings right there. Oh, former okay. statistician. Uh, former statistician for the football games. Okay. And that's Kay Harrell right there to Smacky's left. Or well, Smacky's right hey, or left. We got those guys, we got Spike Lee, uh, Night of a thousand and stars and that's, Frank that's right. Napoli. I, yeah, I can see Bob Simons, former state champion Granby High School, Billy Martin in the stands. Hey, and just like Mark Strickland did before the match, if uh, you see us out here before the match and you want us to say happy birthday or hello to somebody, come on by and do it, and we'll be happy to Now, try let's to not get, get carried away. I'm, we're not going to prostitute. Happy birthday, Rich. Okay. Hey, well, uh, you're a little late. <laughs> and, uh, or, or extremely early. And it's a serious matter on hand. We do have a wrestling match going on, and the score huh? is 3 to nothing. Where? Joey yeah, it Duthis is 3 nothing is in the lead here, and we're in the third period with a minute 41 left you know, to go. Frank, you, when you when you say, you know, Great Bridge, they're obviously, they're a little tired. It's been a long year yeah, for Great Bridge. But guys year. like Donano and Goose, the long season really has seemed to help these guys. Well, they seem to be coming on, you know. You know, they've had to work. Uh, uh, Donano's uh, on a, a TV string here for uh, wins. He's got about three or four wins in a row, and uh, he's actually looking fresh and looking sharp. The other guys show a little, has been showing a little fatigue. And but there are Joey Goose's parents right there here in mm -hmm. attendance tonight, and they look a bit worried. Well, you know, whenever your son's out there, you're concerned. That's right. And uh, they, they seem to, he's not, you know, the score is 3-1, to one, but the match isn't as close as it seems. At this point, Joey has been controlling the bout from start to finish. Minute 12 to go into the third, 3-1, to one, the score. Duth over P.J. Reed of Green Run. Under a minute now. Not a lot of wrestling going on on the mat uh, for this for this match. Booth with the two-point lead, however. Hey, let me do a little promotion here. Okay, why don't you do that? 
Um, Night of a Thousand Promotions. February 17th. Okay. Great Bridge High School. Mm -hmm. The Mr. Great Bridge pageant. Uh, you should come out. Um, a lot. I, I've been uh, at rehearsals this, this week. Uh, there's some hilarious things going on. If you can get the opportunity to get out there, February 17th, get there in time to get your tickets. You can get them at the door. Uh, this course is sponsored by a nonprofit organization at the school. And Mickey, as a matter of fact, yours truly will be the MC for the uh, that, night's festivities. You are well deserved that. Time. Yeah, right. But it's going to be hilarious. Lots of funny stuff going on. So if you get a chance, February 17th, Great Bridge High School, the Mr. Great Bridge pageant. Boy, oh boy. Uh, we'll be having some fun then. 11 seconds, 10 seconds to go into third period. Still 3-1. to one. Joey Guth uh, in the lead. Still, imagine that. They don't take points away too often. So, of course, he would still be in the lead. Five, four. This match almost over. Wrestlers go out uh, bounds with one second to go. And uh, P.J. Reed looks up at the clock and realizes he has his work cut out for him. Makes a valiant, valiant try, but Joey Guth ends up with a 3-1 to one victory. And that will make the score 39-15 to 15 going into the heavyweights. Jason Edmondson, ranked number one in the area, taking on Mark Gibson of Green Run, who is unranked. Jason Edmondson, everybody that stay together at home, One. they call him the dumpster. dumpster. Don't you feel better? That's it. Jeez. The dump in a big match in the semifinals. He got his wish, wanted it to come down to him, and it definitely did. And he uh, showed he was in good form, uh, ranked number one in the area and finished number two in the state. No score so far. Jason Edmondson looking very intense, very uh, methodical. Working on uh, Mark Gibson here. What do you call that shake? Uh, gorilla. The gorilla shake. Oh, that's right. I haven't seen him. He, oh, you got to catch him right between like the sec, the first and the second period. Okay. Or if it's a really tight match, I mean, you don't do the gorilla shake all the time. Mm -hmm. Did you used to do the gorilla shake? Well, you know, it's a different type of shake. Oh, I see. We like to do the shake, rattle and roll. Oh, I see. But uh, uh -huh. Coach Martin knows the gorilla shake. I can see Frank doing the shake, rattle and roll on the sideline right, right. now. That's true. Still no score here with a minute 13 to go in this first period. That's right. Uh, West, uh, Coach Russell Flynn from Lake Taylor just informed us this, will, this is Great Bridge's second straight dual meet championship. Uh, Green Run, uh, Western Branch won the first one. Uh, Thirty-nine seconds to go now. Two to one the score in favor of Jason Edmondson. Edmondson kind of just uh, shooting takedowns here. He's winning four to two. There's two more takedown points for Edmondson. Still in the first period. That'll make it six to two. Two more. That makes it eight to three. And as usual, the uh, the circle just not big enough. Edmondson will cut him loose to give him an escape point. That'll make it eight to four in his favor. Two more points for Edmondson at the end of the first period. And he really racked up some points there. It'll be 10 to four in his favor. Heading into the second period and certainly getting into technical fall territory, Frank, to score that many points that quickly. Still yeah, and that's what, that's what they want to do. I mean, they want to just uh, let him score some points on his feet. All right. Minute 47. Emerson with a six-point lead right now. Pretty much having his way, though. 
Have we seen those patented underhooks yet? Um, no, he's doing shots. A little different look for the dump tonight. Stevie Martin throwing some signals out over there, Frank. Yeah, he's doing it. He's doing a... Oh, there's a nice run in the... That's running the pipe. We're running the log because as big as that guy's feet is... <laughs> the dump dunk uh, is uh, hasn't uh, come yet. The dump duck. We're looking for it. Right. right now, I'd have to say, ooh. 12 to 5 the score right now. See, I'd the circle is just not big enough for heavyweight. I'd have to say the dump's working on maybe, I don't know, let's say five or six cylinders. We don't have an eight-cylinder uh, no, run just, right here. He's just uh, coasting just along. Moves. It's good. It's good that a heavyweight does moves or even nose moves. <laughs> but uh, That's always a plus. Frank, I know thing. that your wrestlers at Bethel knew moves. Yeah, they did. I had some really good heavyweights. But not all of them do. It's more pushing and shoving right. and who falls on who's first and get out of the way. And, <laughs> you know. Look so, out. The cameraman, Richard Hutt, almost got dumped yeah, right there. Yeah, you almost saw the slam cam there. Where <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> Hey. You know, that did happen at a football game this year. That's true. Remember, when the slam yeah. cam, I'm talking Face to the time. camera guys, when the slam cam comes your way, guys, remember to save the camera. No, get the shot. Get the get shot. The shot. <laughs> I don't care. Take it for the team. Dumpster right. in lead 12 to 5. I mean, what, they don't expect us to take it. We have ties on. That's right. Frank will have a tie on next time. That's true. <laughs> and my wife commented on your dapper attire last week. Oh, really? But not uh, this time, Frank. Hey, I, I called Stephen twice, and he wasn't at home. Uh, so I didn't know what to wear. I see. Jeez. Somebody saw me. Who would talk to me before the match? They said, hey, you can't outdress Stevie. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to make me take my sport coat off. I tell you, he's not wearing a gold shirt tonight. It, no, it, that's it, true. It must have been dirty from uh, this morning. Tell you what, Frank, you Can't see we're, we're, at, we're at the heavyweights now, and you see a guy like Brett Thompson from Western Branch still sitting over there trying to take things in. And well, he just What can he pick wrestling. up here uh, sitting around watching the other guys? What is he looking for here tonight? He's uh, looking for his date. He can't find Well, I know it. his date is a no, cheerleader for no. Great Bridge. No, I think that... Uh, I think that what he's looking for is uh, just he loves wrestling and he's and he's and he's a student of the game. He's a very smart kid. He's an honor student. Frank, you did not call wrestling a game, did you? I can't believe that came out of his mouth. Well, you know, it's a game in terms of strategy. Right. But it's a sport in terms of men. Okay, right. Okay. Good. I like that. I like that. Nice one. We set Frank up so well. People think that we have this stuff prepared. It's twelve to five, by the way, in Edmondson's favor. Oh, uh oh. See now he's gonna he. That'll, he'll probably... He's got 128 to go. He has plenty of time. That's a long time to be under the dumpster, I imagine. The dumpster now, there, got, stuck the head up, got yeah, a little camera step time. Up. And we'll stick with it. we got a few interviews to do right here towards the end of the show. We'll try to get to them. And well, that you know, guy's done. Stick a fork in it. And Gibson's Frank is going to make his There's annual trip to uh, the awarding of the trophy. 111 uh, to go in the third or third and final period. Jason Edmondson gets a fall. That'll make the score 45 to 15. Uh, Reese Edgington pinned Labisha Kosick at 125 to get 15 to make the score 15 points for a green run. And they never saw another point the rest of the night, Frank. No, they sure didn't. Uh, the big wins for uh, for Great Bridge was uh, at 135 and also that uh, the move at 130. Today is Jason Emerson's birthday. <laughs> is that the dump's birthday? Happy birthday to the dump. Well, another dual team championship for Great Bridge. There's Jason Edmondson. The birthday Happy boy. Happy birthday, Jason. How about that? Robin Brinkley there getting ready to get a quote from the I birthday I think he'll be, uh, I think he probably turned about 33 today. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm just kidding. Cool. And here comes oh, and the team yeah. singing to him. Look at that. The whole team, Stevie Martin singing to him. Everybody singing to him. Happy 
birthday to the dumpster. Mickey not only celebrating, not only celebrating his birthday, but also Wait celebrating that win he had this against Kemp Field again. This is a exclusive dump. Is it your birthday, buddy? Yeah, it's my birthday. Then happy birthday, dump. Happy birthday to the dumpster. Congratulations on a big win. Uh, in the first match with uh, Kempsville, you told me early, and I told it on television, you hoped the match would come down to you, and it did. Yeah. Well, you know, I kind of I kind of get a little psyched up when it comes down to me. When big matches like that, Kempsville, you know, we had a lot of upsets, and, well, they had a lot of upsets, and we, you know, it, was, it came close, and I like it, like it. Like last year, during Western Branch, it was real close, and that, that's what I like. And then you had a match tonight in the final, and this last match looked like you were pretty well shooting takedowns, having a good time. Yeah, well, Coach said, he said, I don't want you to pin him quick, because I know that you're a little bit better than him, you know, and he goes, I want you to work your stuff, and I went out there, I tried, and that's what I did. Great Bridge wins the second straight dual meet championship. The dumpster, on his birthday, registers two pins in the semifinals and the finals. Congratulations, dumpster, and uh, there might be a spot here for you at the table sometime in the future, but not any time soon. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least he's old enough now. At least he's old enough now. That's right. And Frank going over there, and I still well, think the dumpster could take him easily. And their little kids falling all over the place out here. On this well, planet. it's interesting, uh, Mickey. Uh, while uh, we were talking to Jason Edmondson, uh, it, was, it was interesting that uh, Stevie Martin and his team went out and accepted the region team uh, trophy. So it almost seems like uh, business as usual. They do get the team trophy again. Right. And uh, Coach uh, Coach Martin making a habit of that. Right. Yeah. So that's. That's two out of three. Western Branch won the first one two years ago. Uh, and uh, now Great Bridge has won its second. So the Southeastern District not doing too badly in the uh, dual tournament so far. Oh, no, not at all. They've won all three of the du dual meet championships. And now th this whole process will be postponed till March 6th and 7th. Right. And we'll head out of town for the big uh, big championships. That's right. Next up, uh, next up will be the Southeastern District Tournament. And uh, that's important. I want to say it again to everybody that we want you to call us or write us with your cards and letters to be a part of our big contest to be on our show either for the Southeastern District Tournament or for the Regional Tournament. That's right. Let's run through a final match summary here, Frank. At 103, Shane, or Sean Darnell beats Rob Wilkie by a score of 3-0. to zero. That makes a team score of 3-0. to zero. Shane Darnell loses at 112 to Marcus Sanchez by fall with 40 seconds to go in the uh, first period. Makes a team score 6-3 to three in favor of Green Run. The score becomes 9-3 to three in favor of Green Run when Ben Pratt beats Carl Perry at 119 by a score of 8-4. to four. 125, Labisha Kostick is pinned by Reese Edgington with 30 seconds to go in the first period. All of a sudden, it's 15-3. to three. But they were the last points that Green Run would see as at 130 in overtime, Brian Jones beats John Pratt to give Great Bridge uh, only a nine-point deficit, 15-6. to six. Then at 135, Shannon Baines makes a score 15-10, to 10, uh, still in favor of Green Run, but Great Bridge starting to rebound there uh, as he beats Kyle Profit at 140. John Donano beats Ben Rosencrantz 16-8, uh, to eight, gets those final points to give Great Bridge an eight-point victory and a bonus point. That makes it 15-14 to 14 at 140. At 145, Mark Strickland uh, beat Tony Campus by a fall with a minute five to go in the first period. That gives Great Bridge six points and makes it 20 to 15 in their favor. At 152, Carlos Eason pins Joe Hagenman with about 26 seconds to go in the third period and makes it 26 to 15. The floodgates were opened at that point and they never closed. At 160, Jamie Kelly coming in ranked number one beats Namilo Baja uh, by, a, uh, by a hefty margin to give them a 30 to 15 win or 30 to 15 uh, point lead over Green Run. At 171, Billy Allred is forfeited to. Great Bridge gets six points and they're up 36 to 15. 189, Joey Guth beats P.J. Reed by a score of 3 to 1, making it 39 to 15. And Jason Edmondson pins Mark Gibson uh, at the very end. He pins him with a minute 11 to go in the third period and it's 45 to 15 and that's our final team score here from Lake Taylor and the Region Dual Championship. I really thought uh, John Donano was a big spark and uh, came through and got the eight point win and that set the Wildcats off and it was just kept going and going and going for the Cats here tonight. Enjoyed it Mr. Babb. Well I did too. Uh, 
Mickey as usual. And uh, the next thing coming up, the Southeast, no, no, yeah, the next thing, the Southeast, it's a little bit different this year. Southeastern District Individual Tournament, then the Eastern Region Individual Tournament. Then I believe the next thing is the Team State Tournament. Right. And then finally the state individual tournament. So we've still got several weeks of things going here on ACC 40. We want to thank everybody involved, Frank Lapoli, uh, Mickey. Thanks to you, everybody in the truck, and everybody that uh, 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 came down and talked to us and got on camera. Thanks for everybody's support. People here at Lake Taylor very supportive, and I pretty much thanked everybody because well, uh, that would just about do it. That would just about do it. So thanks for being with us here on Sports Beat 40. We'll see you again next week. Let's go, Ham Boys.